If someone asked you to think about the Virgin Islands, what pictures would come to your mind? Most people probably would think about how lovely our beautiful islands are. Our crystal clear blue waters, our white sandy beaches, our startling breathtaking scenery, and our warm, wonderful sun. For many people, these are the most important aspects of living here, growing up here, and visiting here. But after you see this program, we hope that you'll feel differently. Yes, we do believe that our islands are a beautiful place to live, but the real treasures of the Virgin Islands are its people. And of particular interest in this program are our senior citizens. They hail from many countries and have made the islands their home for many reasons. We asked a group of them to tell us what life was like here when they were young, what kinds of games they played, what chores they did, about their schools, their music, and many other things. It wasn't an easy life because things were so very different when the mothers and fathers of your grandmothers and grandfathers were small children. Listen carefully at the answers they gave. You may be surprised at what they have to say. We began by asking them what kinds of games they played as children. Oh, goodness gracious. Marble, I play top, I jump rope. You play pudding, you call, it, uh, you call it hopscotch nowadays. We call it pudding. You know the squares that you make? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was our games. Sometimes we would be able to go out in the streets and, and, and take an automobile tie and roll it up and down. That was like a toy. We made uh, carts, go carts. Uh, we sometimes would take a broomstick and, and play pony, and that you run along with the, with, the, with the stick and say you run in a horse race. A little simple games like, like those we played uh, at that time. Uh. Sometimes we had little taps, and that was made that when we finished soda basket them with a spool of thread that was empty, we will shape them up and make a top, and we had top play. And uh, sometimes we'll have these cashew, these cashew that was these in the trees, and uh, we'll have that and play a chicken in, in the hole. That's what they used to do. Take a handful and see how much that you could get in that hole, you know? Oh, we play marble, we shoot cashew, we used to shoot kites, I played softball play football, play cricket. Oh, we had a wonderful time in St. In St. Thomas. Things have changed. What kind of chores did you do? You, you were awakened by your parents usually very early, maybe about 6 o'clock. Often, in my family, no, but most uh, children had to go to the reservoir for water. Because in those days, we didn't have large cisterns, and some people only had um, tanks around their houses. So you went to the reservoir for water. Sometimes it was, it, it was quite an unsavory sight because sometimes you had squabbles among the people there, pushing and so forth uh, to get water. Sometimes now and then a fight will, will start. But after that, you return with the water. And then you uh, had to wash the dishes. If you live in the, in the town, you probably wash the dishes. In the country, you had to probably look after the animals, the goats, the cow, and so forth. I had to learn to cook, wash up the wash, especially you wash your clothes, the times of bathing pan. You had bathing pan, you had to scrub brush or kind of a stone from on the beach to scrub the clothes with. And we had no brush to scrub clothes with. It used to be the old white fish that you eat, you take the skin, it dry, and you scrub that floor with it. And a bush named Maran. And when you don't have, it was bought flow. And when you don't have that clean and wet, you gotta go over it again. When you come home, you help your mother do the her washing, her ironing, cooking. We usually use coal for cooking in those days, you know? And your goose for ironing. The way you pull the goose with the coal, well, you have to um, catch the coal in the coal pot and take out some of the, the, the fire that already burning, light. Then you put it over in the goose. And then you take a few pieces of fresh coal and you put it on the fire and you close your goose up, you fan it, and then when it gets hot, you know, you got to know when it's hot enough to iron. Not too hot or not too cold. 
in front of your house, if there was a gutter run in front of your house, you had to keep the gutter clean. You had to get water in the morning and flush the gutter down. Get your pistol broom, clean it up. It wasn't like how it is now to wait for the government to come and clean the gutter in front of your property or where you live. If there was bush going outside your fence, you had to pull the bushes or the weeds up. How did you get around in the old days? You had to do a lot of walking because when cars started to come here, only about three persons was able to have a car. You see? It's only now everybody have a car. You had to walk. You had to walk, walk, walk. My mother used to do a little selling, and I know that was in their dock. We used to have to carry things so hard. We had to walk, not to give no lift. Our roads were built for animals. Those days, like donkeys and horses and whatnot, you know. Well, we had donkey and we had horses. And we didn't have no wagon. We had a mule or horse to, 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 to carry it. We call it a, a buggy, like a buggy light with wheels on both sides. What do you remember about your school days? The main difference between today and, and yesterday in school is this, the rigidity and the strictness. You had to sit properly, you had to sit up, you had to fold your hands like this, you couldn't talk, and you, 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 you were regimented. But it had an advantage also because you, you, you paid more attention to the teacher because if you didn't pay attention, you were punished. And in those days, you were punished for not knowing the lesson. Not only for misbehavior, but if you were asked a question that the teacher felt you should know, and you didn't know, bam, bam. Often after that, you, you, you got the answer. I don't know where it came from, but <laughs> you usually got the answer after you got a little touching up. We had to walk to school about 10 miles every morning, back and forth, see? And then, too, you really had to carry something to eat, don't care what it is. We never used to get no lunch or nothing like that. So those days wasn't easy. What you had to learn when you went to school in those days was no if, ands, or but. Because when you go to school, the teacher was in charge. And you dare not go home and tell your parents that the teacher did something to you. The first thing they're going to ask is, what did you do? See, that was the attitude. And children, you were so circumspect. They behaved themselves and they respected your teachers. Let me tell you, if you don't get there to school when that bell rings, you know what's going to happen behind that. You have to stand up all day without eating or anything like that. That was one. Hmm. Well, I, I really had fun in my school days when I was young because I used to mingle with the boys, the girls, and we had fun and talking about our grades and what we do. Some of us had went down. <laughs> we didn't have such high grades, and some had high, and you know we used to pack one another but no fighting and no going on like I see today. Oh, no. Storytelling used to be very popular. What can you tell us about those storytelling times? Yeah. It's, it's, it's so nice today to remember all different stories our parents used to tell us at night. You know, before we go to bed, sleep, they used to take us and tell us all kinds of stories. The name of the stories, Why the Crab, get a dent in his back, got this dent in his back, got the witch at that other um, hit him with her stick. He attacked too much. So the witch hit him, the stick in his back. That's, the, that's why a crab has a dent in his back. One man was wagering with another one saying, uh, I bet you can't go down there because uh, there are jumbies down there that, that are falling. And the man said, I have a dog. If I go down with that dog, even the Jumbies will run away. Because he is so bad, he even would bite grass. So he said, all right, go with the dog. So this night he went to the dog down where the Jumbies were supposed to be uh, falling and so forth. And the dog went, rah, rah, the dog was very wrong. When the dog got down there, supposedly he heard this thing, woo! The dog took away. Got, uh, dug himself away from the man and ran away. And the man was down there by himself. He almost fainted because the dog that he felt would protect him 
he ran away and he was done by himself. So that, that was one story. And there are many, many other stories. They, they call them um, Bru Nancy stories and they would tell us and they all had meaning behind them. In the beginning we felt they were just uh, uh, fun alone, but each Bru Nancy story has a, a meaning uh, behind it that is very important because they, they came from Africa, from West Africa, and they're supposed to tell you about certain things to do and not to do and so forth. Tell us about the difference in the way children behaved and how parents raised them. The kids today, number one, they have too much freedom. We didn't have that much freedom when we were growing up. Number one, the kids had to work either in the house or in, uh, in some other person's house. Now, for instance, I, I was put out to work when I was 11 years old. It wasn't hard work, but it was still work. I wasn't in the house. Well, one thing I had to be good because my mother was very strict on us. She never leave us go a place without she knowing where we're going. And they say, for instance, like to the school and to the churches, you used to have picnic and so. But the elder one always had to go with you, and when she say it's time to go, you have to move. Very, I'm ashamed to know that St. Thomas is such in such a condition as it is today with the kids them growing up. I couldn't do nothing half the behavior, nothing half the behavior these kids doing today. I would be spanked from my teacher, and when I get home and my mother heard it, I will get another spanking. They had a show someplace. In my days, young days, you couldn't go to that show unless your parents were there with you. No, no. And you couldn't come no hours and think late hours like what I see now. Four in the morning, you come inside the house. You understand? No, no. We had to abide by the rules and by the law of our parents. And which was a very nice one because I turned it back to my children and I'm so happy and proud of my children. What was courting and dating like for young men and women in those days? At that time, my dear, though you had a lover, you, have to, you had to be still submitted to your parents. Because when he brought, bring the question, it is yes, it is yes, and it is no, it is no. But you will see Mama in a rocking chair right there, Papa in another one, and you and the person, they sit down chatting, but they're never going to sleep and leave you two there. <laughs> never. That will be sure he leaving. So that, that was really the way how things were brought up with, with principle and decency, you know? Well, if you see a, a little chick, if you like, she's coming from school, it, uh, let's say school over, let's about four o'clock. You wait a little distance, you, you look at the, her, her line of travel. Well, tomorrow you, you follow the same line, but you'll get a little ahead of her. So when she passes, you say, Psst. When you hit her, she may look at you with a nasty face, you know. Well, man, I could carry a book, you know. And sometimes you may pull up close and attempt to carry a book. She may hit you the book in your head, but uh, you don't mind. You, you, you try to be a brave fellow. I used to write a note and write a letter to my boyfriend. And when the trucks them coming up to go up to do their work, what they had to do in the country, I used to wait for the truck before I go up to school, before I go into school. And I used to tr throw it in the truck. And my husband get it. And when he coming up again, he gave me the answer. Otherwise, I couldn't see my husband. I couldn't see my, my boyfriend. If a young man, he had to come to your house. And there was always somebody. I always have a, 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 a brother sitting there. You know what I mean? He had to. Don't laugh. It isn't funny. <laughs> it's not funny now. <laughs> That's right. There always had to be some, like a chaperone. Even if it wasn't a grown person, it was one of your brothers or sisters, you know, so they can go tell on you if something funny happens. Tell us about the jobs people had in times past and how they made ends meet. Well, there weren't very many jobs to go into because, you know, 
in the Virgin Island in those days, you had to do a little agriculture, a little fishing, a little raising of small stocks like, you know, goat and sheep and things like that. But in my stage, my family owned boats. So we used to go and sail and take gravel and sand and wood and charcoal to St. Thomas. It was all trade, you know. We did a little fishing, things like that. We didn't get a lot of money. My grandmother used to make two cents a basket of coal. And she started to go up whenever the coal ship coming from down South America. We didn't have no to take coal off the ship. It's human had to go with basket and shovel the coal up, put it in the basket, put it on the head and put it on the wharf. Clean all night long, they're the, the cleaning the ship, taking the coal out, putting it and leave it there, and then a ship will come from Europe, then they had to put the coal in that ship, and she go to Europe with the coal. Denmark, all over there. Those were some rough, hard working days. Today they got it easy. You make it more money today. They used to make baskets with sweep. Weave. And two, what we used to do, help our parents. Our father used to burn them on charcoal, you know. And we kids had to, when they cut that on wood for the charcoal, we had to take all that to the, the doctor, you know, to build, etc. So we work hard with our parents. It was 20 cents an hour. The public works, that men used to work for 20 cents an hour. My husband, our company came by the, the name of uh, Mares and Earrings. Oh, my husband only used to get 22 cents an hour to support a family. Because when I married to him, I, before then I had a little part-time job. I used to go Villa Olga, that same Villa Olga down there. And I used to have a little job with cleaning, you know, and house cleaning, anyhow. You had men making shoes because to get shoes from the United States used to take an awful long time. Sometimes you may order a pair of shoes from the United States, by the time you wait so long for the shoes, when the shoes come, they're too small. <laughs> so it was easier to get your shoes made here. It might be a little more expensive. What happened when a hurricane came? It's 1925. We had a terrible hurricane. Lots of trees fell down. The power, the, water, the power water from the sea was up and land. You had different little things built up and when the rain and the wind come, like so long we used to rear um, chicken and so, you know. When you get up in the morning, you'll find the chicken coop with the fowl house, lot on the ground and things like that. But you had to stay in, otherwise you surely get damaged because you hear the galvanized flying off of the roof of the house and so, and that was quite dangerous. When the hurricane is, they had a, um, a red flag, but when it really come in, they put a red flag with a black center and signal hail. And the marines will come around and tell you to bar up, bar up, gale come in, gale come in. When it's reaching um, and, um, Antigua, they come around. So you see the people get ready. They put bathing pans of water in their, inside the house. They get um, kerosene lanterns, those kerosene lamps, with matches and everything, and get tin food biscuit and like sardine and canned beef and keep in case. They don't know how long the duration of the hurricane might be last. Then there was Fort Christian. That was on my parking spot. Everybody go into Fort Christian. The church is open, and who want to go to the different churches or go in the churches. But we like my mother and my grandmother, we always go to um, Fort Christian. What kind of clothing styles did people wear in times past? Well, uh, the clothes, I'm going to, the, when we were small little girls, now these is, is a big long dress now that I demonstrate and 
I show the people of the long time ago. But when I was younger, I used to wear them same bonnet and same top, but they were smaller, they were shorter. I had to wear a flannel that was made by hand. The next piece they wear was the underbody. Those were made by hand. Next piece they wear was a chemise made by hand. Next piece was a petticoat. Plus the dress was the last piece that they wore. All those. When they go into church on Sunday, or like a funeral or so, they had something that you call a corset that used to brace them in with bone. That's my grandmother. She died when she was about 50, I think 54, 55 years. And um, that's the type of dress that they wore in those days. You see the hat, the, the, the style of the hat and the, uh, the dress. She used to sell in the market. She was a market vendor, as you call them now, vendors. And you had to be satisfied with whatever the clothes would be that your mother gave you. Don't mind what other child could wear. She gave you what you could, what you could have afford, and you had to be glad with it. Tell us about the music that was popular when you were growing up. We used to go to the, the uh, Emancipation Garden. You know the bands? The community had a community band and the Navy band. And they would have concerts and, uh, in, and sat, uh, Sunday afternoons and other nights. And you go to that. We had an, uh, what was known as Quell Bay, which is not the same as Calypso. Uh, it's the music that um, Yepsen and his band would play in St. Thomas. Arthur Yepsen and his band, and Paris and James E. and the, I forgot the name, the, 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 the hot shots and so forth. You have a lot of that in St. Croix. But you had a, a, a different kind of a music. It was similar to Calypso, but it wasn't exactly Calypso. And that really is the indigenous music of the Virgin Islands. That and one we call Carico, uh, Carico, uh, that uh, is still performed on St. Croix. And then later on, the Calypso came up in the steel band and so forth. Oh, there were nightclubs then that were really nice. Uh, because the bands were small, they were different. There was no amplifiers to blast your ears out. Lots and lots of scratchy bands. And um, the favorite one at that time was Spaghetti and the Meatballs. They were great! <laughs> and steel drums, the steel bands abounded. They were everywhere. The scratchy bands were always on the beach, you know. And um, Sebastian's was the favorite spot. They had nice dances at Christmas and Carnival times and in between. The reason why they call it scratch band because the people were poor. They didn't have money to buy instruments like how a young fellow nowadays tell his father, Daddy, I want a, I want a saxophone. Pay the father buy him a saxophone. In those days, you want a flute? Okay. C cut a papaya stem. And cut a couple of holes in it. Put a piece of cellophane paper to the head and tie it and you make improvise a flute, you learn to play the scale. That will be your flute. Well, to make a quattro or a ukulele, these cigars used to come from Cuba. In those days, you used to import cigars from Cuba. These would come in some boxes about so high and about long like this. So these would take those cigar boxes and make ukulele out of them. These would make good sound. And the, the wiro, the Americans call it a gourd, it is really a sweet go that you're allowed to dry. And when it dry, you take out the inside of it, and then you get a, a, a file or a hacksaw, and you make the grooves up and down, and you chick, 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 chick. How did people of different races treat each other back then? Yeah, they had different ways to deal, and they helped one another. Help one another, do anything they got to do, but no. If you don't have money, you can't get nothing to do. We used to cooperate there because we was very good, you know, the colored come up to us. And we go to color. I have seen myself go and lay down in, in colored people's house when I was a little younger. And especially the girls at school, they used to go, we, they used to take me to their parents' home. And we used to have good times, you know. But one thing that never was they doing at that time, in the 20s, the 30s, that you're married your own country people.
There might have been conflicts, but it wasn't as out and out as it is now. And I believe why you hear more of it is because of radio. Anybody could get, pick up a telephone and call in a, on a talk show and say anything. Cuss off the black and cuss off the white and believe he had done his chore. But in those days, you find black and whites. Sometimes they eat out the same plate and, and nobody cares. But then there were other times you find whites stay away from blacks because of just about the same thing. So it wasn't a case where you find a set of whites down yonder and a set of blacks up here and we don't cross each other paths. Sometimes we, we drink the liquor together and, you know. In, our, in these islands, it have always been a, a way where black and white found some way to get along. When you were a child and you were ill, what kinds of home remedies were used? Your mother would boil salt and bush uh, and give it to you to drink. And then if it don't help you, then they take you to the hospital. But generally, it used to help. You know, when you got a fever, your parents didn't just run, rush you to the hospital like that. They gave you a little uh, cane pea tena or lemongrass tea or even some black water tea, you know, cool your off. But generally those, those bush used to help, helped a lot, you know, with common ailments, you know. My grandmother was a famous one for leech. Leeches. It's something you put on uh, if you have um, information, uh, you used to call it bruised blood, information, uh, black, those black spots, you know, the ecomos area, and they would put that and that will uh, draw the um, poison out. That's what, uh, and then for other things, you have the bush, you know, for tea, all the different tea bushes, to, for, to, for sleeping, especially the children, especially babies, their favorite uh, tea was sour sap bush tea. Um, they used to use hibiscus to take hibiscus and boil it and make syrup for cough and cold. You should take simple vibe that you call aloes. You eat the bitter aloes and, well, I don't know how good it was for cold. How did you celebrate the holidays? They make tarts. You know, potato, sweet potato pudding, you all call me. They used to call it pone because they did it in the iron pot. They baked it in the iron pot. And, you know, sweet bread and ham. They would get that, um, that ham that you had to soak for about a week. But it was with this cotton. I could remember one Christmas I cried, I cried, I cried because my mother, my uh, mother was poor and I couldn't have a Christmas like what the children had. And I can remember a lady next door, she gave me a thing they call a rara. They used to have Easter dances, Easter. the masqueraders used to come out on holidays. For instance, every Thursday used to be bank holiday. The masqueraders used to come from Savannah, different sections of the island, and parade through town. And while they paraded, they have a hat out and people throwing pennies in the hat. That was a good guys for making at least a day pay. The time some fellows with drums and beating up a regular bambola style, you know, and they, they're doing their stuff. Sometimes you may have a moko jumbi or two doing their stuff too. Lesbian Thursdays and holidays, the same thing. Uh, and for the July, we used to go up in the Emancipation Garden. Comparing the way of life in the old days to the way it is now, what changes have you seen? Policemen were respected. You, you, when you saw a policeman come in, whether you were doing something wrong or right, or you were in doubt, you cleared away and you remained still until he had passed because they were held in great esteem and awe and even a little bit of fear. And that was, it wasn't like today. You know, a police officer was highly respected and all he had to do was appear in the scene and that was the end of whatever they saw that was in that vicinity. You could go and leave your house open and nobody bothered it. If I wanted to go away, I would just ask the neighbor next door, well, I mean, throw an eye on the house for me. I could eat, go, even go off island 
and nobody would bother your house. Now you're in the house and people are, are you know, coming and uh, tr are trouble you. So that's one of the things that has really changed and has been very bad for the island because you can't trust anybody anymore. No manners, no respect, nothing like that is happening today. See? We really had to have respect for the smart. For the smallest kid, one to the other, we really had to have respect. If we ever say a hurtful word to one, you know what we're going to get, you know. And especially us big ones to the small little ones, we had to teach them manners and everything. If you don't do it, your parents beat you, say, because you didn't tell your little sister to do this, to do that in the right way. So then you get it, you know what I mean? So it, those days were days. This morning I asked again, Mr. Could I? Could I s ask you a question? You know, so no, 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 ask me nothing, nothing. You see, they, 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 they don't have the same old custom like we had when I was young. Today, it's so many bad people in the world, I'm telling you, it's a shame. It's a shame. They have more bad than what's good. 20 times bad and worse than good. And St. Thomas was never like it is today, never. Courtesy, dignity. Honesty, that's how we come up. Life was better in that we had a sense of community. We, people felt that we, we were one. You, you, you were your brother's keeper. If you didn't have something, a neighbor would more readily help you than today. Uh, we lived closer together. Most people lived either uh, in the town or nearby. And uh, you knew everyone. It was a smaller population. You, you had only about, in St. Thomas, about maybe... 12 or 13,000 people when I was growing up and you almost knew everyone in town and people felt a sense of community more than, than today. So in that way life was better. They, 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 we have more amenities now. We have radio and television. We have uh, uh, machines to do our work and so forth. So in that way life is, in, is somewhat better but uh, in other ways life was better in the past. I never had any trouble in life really. I had a nice life. Very nice. These people are our Virgin Islands treasures. They struggled to survive, walked, played, and worked in our sunshine, grew up to be the parents of our parents, and helped to make the Virgin Islands the wonderful place it is today. Let's all remember the things they have to say and cherish our senior Virgin Islanders for their importance to us all.